Sam Hendra from Bentley Systems here again in the second video in the series on the Import Points VBA. Have you ever had data where you had it in a CSV file or Excel spreadsheet and you need to bring that into MicroStation? Well, that's what this does. Now, behind me is the website where you can get it. There'll be a link down below where you can go to download this. Now, also behind me is the dialogue. And the one we're going to be using is the second one on the list. It's going to be import cells and item types. It just says items, but it means item types. That's what we're going to be doing. If you stick around to the end of the video, you're going to see how we can label from the item types using the place note. And you can also generate a report, all of that, because we were able to import that data. So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to be exploring using the import points VBA to import information that's latitude and longitude. And we're going to place a cell and we're going to attach item type data to it. It's going to be really exciting. So what are we going to start with? What is our Excel spreadsheet data? So I'm going to drag this over. Here's my spreadsheet. Now it's looking for a CSV file. So this will have to be saved off as a CSV file, but we're looking at this Excel file. You'll notice the first row has header information. That's really a good thing to do, not required. But if you label your columns, your data, it comes across and makes a lot more sense. I'll point this out a little bit later. We have all kinds of information. In addition to our latitude, longitude, we've got county, route, health assessment. Put a pin in that. We're going to come back and we're going to be able to extract this information out, colorize things based on that. So this is the information we want to bring in. So I'm going to go ahead and move that across. Now we're going to go to our utilities tab. We're going to click on VBA manager. There's my import points. I'm going to go ahead and load the VBA. I'll close the VBA projects dialog. In the upper left corner, this is where we select our source file. That's the CSV file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now I've already loaded this in. So it's part of my history. If you don't have it, you can just navigate to it. I'm going to go ahead and click it open. Now we see on the left hand side is the data coming in. And again, as I told you, if you label your columns, give them headers, this will be much easier for you. Now we are working with latitude and longitude. So you want to go to the settings button in the top right, and you want to make sure that you have selected coordinates are in latitude, longitude. If you're in northing and easting, you're going to get an error message. You also see it says input file has header row again, strongly suggested. So we've got these two checked. We're good. Now with this information on the left, we need to tell it a couple of things on the right. First, what do we want to output it to? We've already done a video on cell. Now we're going to do one on cell plus item. Item type is what we mean. We need to select a cell first. So I'm going to click on the select cell. I already created a cell library called culverts.cel and it has one cell in it. If I select it, you get a preview of what it looks like. We're not checking anything else over here. We're just going to be using that cell and there's only one cell in that cell library. If you want to choose a different one, you would click cell library there. I'm going to go ahead and select select cell and continue. Next thing I need to do is select my item type. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this. If you haven't worked with item types before, they were initially introduced in V8i in the later versions, and we couldn't really do anything with them. But now in MicroStation Connect Edition, we can create item types. If you've ever worked with tags, this is the successor to it. And if you're coming from AutoCAD, attributes in AutoCAD, this is a similar thing. So a library, if you don't have a library, if you haven't worked with item types before, don't worry, we can create them on the fly with this VBA. So you could pick a library and an item type if you have it, but if you don't, we just click this one, create item types from source fields. On the top, you have an option where you can either create a new item type library, or you can use an existing one. We're gonna create one, we'll call this culverts. That's the name of the library. Now the item type, we're going to call this Culvert Health. Down below, this is where you can pick the columns, the data that you want to make into item types. Latitude Longitude is not selected, and this is by design because we're using that to place the cell in the file. So we don't necessarily need to see that, but if you wanted to have 
as an item type on the cell, you could add that in. So not only would it be placed by longitude latitude, this file is a northing and easting file, So, but it will still place it correctly, but you can have that as extra data. Now I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom. I wanna make sure I have everything selected. So I hold the control key down. I click these two extra ones here, and now I'm gonna create a pend. And now I'm gonna select the item type because that's the library that I just created in the item type. You can see it all gets populated here. Again, the names are coming across from the column headers. So now to get that information over to the right, you could drag and drop, just as simple as this, dragging and dropping, which really makes it nice because sometimes your longitude, latitude, things like that are not in the same order as you see them here. And if they're not, you can just drag and drop. But there is an automatic remap button down at the bottom. So if I click here, it will do its best to automatically map from the header name over to the column on the right, which should be identical because it was using the headers to create the item type property names. Now, elevation, it did its best. To get rid of that, I just double click. Now I've got everything selected. It's time to go ahead and in the bottom right, click the place button. It just takes a moment. You can see to the right here, there are my culvert location marker cells placed. If I zoom in, you can see there it's located. Now, if I go and get properties for this, you're gonna see here, there's my item type data. There's number, date, county, there's my health value. Now, if I choose another one over here, this one's 21, the other one was 41. So you could see there's a difference in value and this all one also shows up as a category of poor. We wanna be able to label these based on that information. So I can close my import points dialog. Now I've already set up a couple of things in this file. So I'm gonna to go to my space bar, which I have the pop-up menu, I've extensively customized it. Always encourage people to do that. There's a place note tool. On the place note dialog here, you see where it says favorites. If I click there, I've already created a favorite called culvert type. Now I'm gonna to go to manage to show you how I did this. This is local in the file. If I click here, there's my favorite. If you look at what it's going to extract out here, it's gonna be looking for ID number, type, post mile, and also the health. What you see with the gray background, that's basically looking at item type information. So when I touch the element to place the note on, it extracts that for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I'm going to pan over here. You can see this, and I'm going to choose that as my favorite. You see it gets populated. Now I'm just gonna touch the cell. I, there's my first one. I'm gonna come over here, touch the cell, and I'm gonna do another one down here. And you can see now I've just placed notes annotated based upon the item type data. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get out of that. Next thing. What if I wanted to change the appearance of these elements based upon their health property? So we have a range of 21, 41, and 45 just under my view right here. So I'm gonna to go to my view attributes, control B, B for better viewing. Display styles, I'm gonna to go to the right and click on the open display styles dialog. I've created for this exercise in this file, two display styles. Now this could be put in a gen lib, that's what we recommend. But if I choose Culvert Health to the right here where it says display rules, this is new in MicroStation Connect Edition. If I click here, I don't have any display rules, I'm going to define one. This is the dialog that comes up and here I'm just gonna go ahead and type in Culvert call it anything I want. To the right, this is going to be an easy one because I have a range of values that are assigned. So I'm just going to go to the generate. This is not the only way to do it, but it's very easy for me to just have nice gradation color applied. So I'm going to go to property. I have elements in my file that has this item type. You need that in order to do this. I'm going to go and navigate down. There's my health assessment. Those with the numeric values. 
When I choose that, it reads the file and says, okay, you have that item type with that property and the range is 21 to 72. I can see them listed down below. Now I'm going to colorize them. So I'm going to click color. Now it puts poor health, which is 21 and good health, which is 75. It makes those green and this red. So that's probably not the way we want it. We want to invert that. So I'm going to click on the color square. Modify color comes up. I'm going to change that one to red. I'm going to click over here and I'm going to change that one to green. So we can just invert these. Now I'm also going to change the weight. So I'm going to come down here to weight. This is not necessary, but I like to do this again. I want poor health to be thicker. So I'm going to change that. That's what it's going to make that crazy, like 25 and then good health. We're going to make that weight of zero. And you can see down below here, I'm showing up my gradation and my weight. I only have rules of five. I can make this 10 or more. I'm going to make it 10. So I have lots of gradation down here. So you can see how it appears. Now I can just hit generate and it just generates that for me automatically much easier than me going through. And I could have done this one by one, but this is just much easier. So now I want to apply this. So I'm going to go ahead and close this for this particular display style. I want to use this. It's assigned. I just need to double click on that and you can see it applies it to the view. You could see this is thick and this is not as thick. If I turn it off, everything goes back to normal. If I apply the display style, you can see it comes up. So that's something else we can do with the data. And this display rules it doesn't need to be item type data, although it's very convenient. It could be on the length of a line, it could be any element in the file. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to close this out, close that out. Last thing I'm going to show you is we can report on this information. So I'm going to go to my reports dialog. Again, I've customized my pop-up menu. This by hitting the space bar, you start with three rows and I just add stuff to it. So here's my reports and I've already created a couple of reports here and which, oh darn, what you're going to notice down here is the name of the item types. I changed the names from the last time I created this. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and change this. I want to make this go Colbert health and let's see if we can go ahead and I'm going to create some columns in here quickly so you can see how easy this is to do. So I want all these columns in my report. Again, I'm doing this quickly because this is about import points. Now I've got this report set up. Let's see, this is all the data. Let's see what it looks like. Do a quick preview. This brings up a quick preview and I see this information. Now you may think, well, I kind of started with this in the Excel spreadsheet. I could now place this as a table in MicroStation if I wanted to, and it is linked to these elements. So if we changed any of the values, the item type data, these reports would change also. Now, I also did one down here, which was just count. It also is going to have the same problem because the, the name of the item type changed. Let me quickly change that. And now my columns, in this case, I only have one there. I'm going to go ahead and put in an, another column and I'm just going to put in at this point, I'm going to put in category of health. So that's the only thing I'm going to put in so move that up and let's just take a quick peek and see what it looks like. Do the preview. Now you can see here it's listing them all out. Well, I don't want to see all of them listed out. What I'd like to do is group them. So that's what the groups and aggregates down here does. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to tell it I want to group by health and category. And then down here, I want it to show that value here and I want to do a count. So I go do a preview now. Now I see I have fair. How many fair? 22. How many poor? 31. So it's a pretty cool way to do a reporting. Again, you could do this on elements in the file. It does not have to be item types. Hopefully this inspired you to use the import points BBA 
written by one of my coworkers, Dave. He did an amazing job. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.